everyone, welcome to another TRP Tech Talk. I'm Dave, and today we're gonna to be installing TRP's new cassette, uh, derailleur, shifter, chain, and running you through all the adjustments to get that thing set up and dialed, so stay tuned. But first, here's the tools you're gonna to need for the job. Assorted Allen wrenches, chain breaker, cable cutter, master link pliers, torque wrench capable of 40 Newton meters, cassette lockering tool, grease, clean rags, and nitrile gloves. Okay, we're time to get started. As you can see, I put my nitrile gloves on. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is install the cassette. Uh, this is micro spline, so first thing we're gonna do is get a little bit of grease here, and we're gonna grease up the splines on the hub body. Gonna prevent any corrosion or anything like that. And we're gonna locate that larger tab or spline, and we're gonna locate the same larger gap on this one, and we're gonna line those two up. And that will slide right on. Now, uh, next is gonna be the, the lock ring itself. Again, grease the threads on that. And then using a cassette lock ring tool, we're gonna thread this in by hand it first so you can get it snug. Then we're gonna get our torque wrench. Now I've already set this torque wrench to 40 Newton meters. Awesome, okay, so now that's torqued. We can go ahead and install the wheel onto the bike. I'm gonna take that rear axle. Again, I'm gonna grease the threads. I'm gonna grease the axle just lightly, prevent any corrosion. And this is a six mil, I believe, but depending on your frame manufacturer. Here, we're gonna slide this in, align our rotor, and slide the axle in. And again, tighten to your manufacturer's recommendations of the frame and axle. Okay, so we've got the cassette installed. Next is the derailleur. So we are gonna unlock the hall lock, that's gonna allow our main pivot bolt to move and rotate, which is what we're gonna to need to thread that in. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of grease. And then using a five mil, I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Make sure that your B plate is back up against your B tension bolt, and that it is on the right side of the derailleur hanger. Get those threads started, and this torque, I'm gonna to push this forward. This torque's gonna to be 10 to 12 Newton meters. Right now, I'm just gonna snug that up. And we're gonna leave this hall lock um, unlocked. Um, again, that does lock in that main pivot bolt to prevent any lifting or slapping when you're riding, so when that's locked, it's nice and locked back. There is a two mil adjustment screw on the front of this derailleur to adjust that hall lock just in case something hits it and it smacks it back. Um, you can actually adjust the tension of that. Uh, if that does happen, make sure to um, unlock the hall lock first. If it does get an impact, then rotate it back and then redo the hall lock uh, to make sure you're not messing with the torque of that bolt. Uh, next step is going to be installing the shifter. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, you're gonna take a four mil Allen here and I'm gonna go ahead and pop off the grip. And we're gonna slide that over. Now you can slide this uh, on either side of the brake lever. You can go inboard or outboard. Um, right now I'm gonna set it up um, outboard of the brake lever. And we're gonna to torque that to three Newton meters. And then we can go ahead and pop our grip back on. And unravel our cable. Because the next step is gonna be running this through the housing. So now depending on what frame you have, uh, it may or may not be internally routed. This is internally routed, so as you can see, I've already routed the cable through. I've already installed my ferrules on either side of the housing as well, both front and back. So then I'm gonna take my cable, I'm gonna find the tip. It's a nice brand new cable. We are going to slide it into the housing and just kind of keep pushing it along until it comes out the other side. Now this is nice, it's got a full length housing, so no breaks in it, so I can just go straight through. Okay, now that I've got it back here, I can go ahead and snug that up and seat the ferrule into the shifter. 
Now for starting the adjustment, this shifter uh, I can tell is already, the barrel adjuster is already bottomed out. So I'm gonna give it two full turns. So that's one, two full turns to give me some adjustment on either side of the spectrum. I can get it looser, I can get it tighter if I need to. So again, then I'm yank on this cable, get some tension on there. So we have this nice function of the cage release. We can actually pull this tab while putting some preload on that uh, lever and we can completely release the cage. This is just kind of, you can feel the clutch actually, which is kind of nice, but that's completely out of my way now. Uh, and then we're gonna take our cable and we're gonna go around around the pulley like that. And then we're gonna seat our ferrule very nicely there. And then from the back side, we're going to thread this through around the guide and out as you can see there. Around the pulley, around the guide and out. And then I'm gonna take my Allen and we're just gonna snug that up. Okay, now that we've got the cable ran through, the derailleur on the cassette, all that together, we're gonna to go ahead and install the chain. Uh, now we need to measure the chain length first. Um, and in order to do that, uh, for a full suspension at least, we're gonna to need to compress the suspension. So uh, I'm gonna grab a couple of straps here. These are just some toe straps. And I'm gonna, on this particular bike, some bikes are easier than others, but uh, I'm gonna go through the shock here, go around the shock and then uh, Tighten this up a little bit, and I'm gonna need to compress that suspension. Awesome. Okay, now that that's locked as if it was fully preloaded, this is gonna make sure that we're allowing and accounting for any chain growth that full suspensions have. I'm gonna take my chain, and these are not a directional chain, so you can put it on either way, but we're actually gonna wrap it around the large cog, and we're gonna wrap it around the chain ring here. And we use that wave technology for the chain ring, so that it does go on uh, a specific direction. So I'm actually gonna skip the um, derailleur right now. We're just gonna go around the biggest cog and the chain ring, and we're going to find where they overlap. And so for a full suspension like this, with the suspension compressed um, and fully around the cassette, find where they overlap and add one full link. So one inner link and one outer link, and then add that extra master link. So find the two inner links, account for that one outer master link. And then for a hardtail, you're gonna wanna add two full links. So two inner, two outer, and then make sure to account for that extra master link. So uh, awesome, I've got that. I'm gonna take this off figure out where I need to cut it. I'm gonna take my chain breaker tool and then cut this to length. Okay, so now that I've got that cut to length, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shift the derailleur the lowest, we're all good there. Um, and I've already got the cage release still done, so I can actually lower this through the cassette. And then we're gonna go around the upper pulley, make sure to clear the guide, that guy right there, and give yourself some slack on that end. Go ahead and get it around the chain ring. Again, that's a wave technology, so it does go on a specific way. And then we're gonna take our master link here, one in. One out, connect those, and I'm gonna use my master link pliers here. I'm gonna snap that in. Okay, great. So chain's installed. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and reconnect the cage. So to do that, you're gonna pull down on this lever right here. You can feel that that is actually the resistance of the um, spring and clutch and everything in there. So that actually clicks right back into place. You can do that one-handed even and get some tension on the chain. That looks really good for being in the smallest cog. We're gonna get to the B tension setup here in a minute. Um, right now, I'm gonna go set the high limit. Uh, so that's gonna be the smallest cog, that's the high limit, that's gonna be the one if you're facing the back of the bike on the left-hand side. And if I get, actually can get behind it, this needs to be loosened up quite a bit. And I'm gonna actually take the tension off of my cable here because that's See that, that was actually 
uh, restricting the derailleur from falling all the way back down. Again, kind of getting a, a rearward perspective. We're gonna set that high limit screw so that the chain is perfectly up and down and it's not going too far to the inside or the outside. So awesome. I've got that set screw, high limit screw. I'm gonna put some tension back on my cable here uh, and then again, snug this down. We're gonna start messing with the tension. So I am gonna put this under a little bit of load and we're gonna, again, leave this hall lock unlocked because we're gonna have to adjust the B tension in just a minute. Um, we can actually release now the uh, bike from it being under load. Awesome, awesome. And we can take this guy out as well. Okay. Awesome. So uh, we're gonna got that snugged. B tensions um, next, and also the hall locks off. I'm just gonna pe keep an eye on my tension. Um, I can see actually right now that my B tension is already too low because I'm, I'm rubbing the cogs right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a three mil Allen and I'm gonna turn my B tension screw clockwise, give myself a little bit more tension. That'll bring the derailleur back uh, like so and then kind of move that pulley away from the cassette. Tension's looking pretty good already. I'm getting nice crisp shifts. And right now I can't get into the biggest cog because the low limit screw. So again, that's facing the back of the bike. That's gonna be the one on the right now. Um, I'm gonna to have to loosen that a little bit and I can actually get into that biggest cog. Uh, now again, rearward facing, we're going to adjust that low limit screw so that it is preventing the derailleur from going into the spokes and shifting the chain into the spokes, creating a big old nightmare. Um, and so I've got that set so that it's perfectly in line. So I've got the low limit screw set so that this is nice and in line. It's not gonna push the chain or the derailleur into the spokes. I'm gonna shift it down one click. So we're in the second to last. Now I'm gonna set my B tension. We're looking at the top of the pulley and the bottom of the largest cassette cog. And we're gonna take our B tension screw and turn that so the gap is on a 52 tooth cassette like this. It's gonna be 15 to 17 millimeters. And what that is gonna do is give us clearance for the tooth, the pulley here, uh, and these teeth on the cassette to clear each other so they're not binding, they're not hitting each other. Um, I've got that set pretty well, I think. Go ahead and kind of give ourselves an idea of how that shift's gonna take place. Okay, now what I can do is get an idea of where my tension is, the cable tension itself. Um, that's kind of a fine tune. Um, it can be too tight, it can be too loose, but you want each shift to be nice and crisp in between each cog. Um, I'm not seeing any hesitation dropping, maybe slightly, and, uh, and I'm seeing a tiny bit of hesitation. So I'm gonna set myself up in the middle cog here, and I'm gonna get a general idea. Uh, again, from a rearward angle, looking down, it looks like if I were to take the chain and paint a straight line, that I'm a little low on the tension, uh, so what I can do without actually messing with this, uh, again, that's gonna be torqued to four to six Newton meters. Uh, I'm gonna actually um, take my barrel adjuster and I'm gonna turn this um, counterclockwise. Uh, I'm gonna give that two clicks, so that's half a turn. Uh, since my cable was a little low on tension, that'll bring the barrel adjuster out and that'll increase the distance, increase the tension. Awesome, uh, this is looking really good. My chain tension is really good in the lowest cog. I've got nice crisp shifts here and we're not going over uh, B tension set correctly, low limit set correctly, high limit set correctly. It's not hesitating dropping the last cog. And uh, as we mentioned in some of the features, I have this set to the single click. Let's go ahead and uh, click the selector switch into the five clicks at a time, so we should be able to run through this derailleur, run through the cassette. Awesome. What will also happen is you'll notice the cable will kind of settle in, the ferrules will settle down on the housing, the housing will compress slightly, the cable will stretch ever so slightly. So all that will need a little bit of adjustment 
after the first ride, uh, maybe two, maybe even before then. So um, it looks like everything's good. I've got everything torqued. I've got the chain length set. So there's only one last thing to do really, and that's cut this cable and make it look all pretty. Give myself about eh, 20, 30 millimeters or something like that. So I have a little bit of room to play with. Take a nice cable end crimp here. And we're gonna crimp that on easily. Inside of these wires. Cool, great. Uh, and last but not least, turn our haw lock on. The instant engagement clutch is already there. Um, and we are basically set to ride. Uh, now there's a couple other features I wanna show you on this derailleur for wheel removal, um, including the haw lock and that cage release. Both, you're gonna to wanna to be in the smallest cog first. So if you get a flat tire, something happens, you need to take the wheel off, as we all do. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take that haul lock off. That's again, gonna let that derailleur move. Once it's locked, everything stays in place, makes the derailleur very quiet. So take the haul lock off, and then we're gonna do the cage release. There's a small tab here. You can actually rotate that down 90 degrees. And then there's a larger tab that faces back that is actually under load. Uh, that is what the spring is attached to. So you can release the entire cage by pulling on that knob while preloading the lever. So if you just try to pull lever, it's got a notch in it, it's a safety feature so it doesn't come undone on its own. So preload the lever, pull the, pull the tab, you'll release the cage, boom. Now this is free to move back, get the chain out of the way, you can take the axle out, drop the wheel, uh, and then to get it back, super easy, push that forward. Um, you, can, you can assist that if you want to, you don't have to, uh, but all you need to do with one finger is push that lever down, you'll hear that small click, um, and that, that cage release is re-engaged, and then turn your haul lock back on. Okay, now we've got everything installed, everything adjusted, you are ready to ride. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If so, please drop a like, and if you have any questions, go ahead and comment below, or hit up our customer service team. And for more content like this, Please subscribe and check out our website, trpcycling.com. Thanks, guys. See you later.